we've been talking about new modes of transportation. It's pretty clear. Uh, Bobby Kennedy said it, Obama is saying it, people have been saying it for a while. We need to change the basic transport energy system, and we don't appear to have too much time to do it. So electric cars are very much of the moment, and at, uh, was it last year's Idea City, we had Clifford. Um, Ian Clifford, who is the uh, promoter, uh, founder, and uh, CEO of the Zen Electric Car Company. His timing appears to have been really quite terrific. He's on the edge of what appears to be viability and success, and so I invited him to come back here and uh, do a free-for-all, a quick, short uh, update. He agreed, and, uh, and he's in the UK right now. Um, raising another round of uh, funding, but has, uh, has proposed that someone from his company, in fact, Evan, Evan Clifford, is that you? All right. And what's your role in the company? This is the Zen Motor Company. I'm the marketing coordinator at right. Zen, but I've worked with him since 2001 okay. when he founded it. So why Thank don't you. you tell us the latest state of play? I will. I wanted to start by saying... Uh, Got it. I made a recent discovery uh, on a trip to Britain when I went to meet my mother's family there and people I had never met before. And my great uncle was excited to tell me that five generations back from me, I had an uncle named Thomas Parker who invented the first electric car, which was fascinating because my uncle behind me, Ian Clifford on my father's side, is the CEO and founder of Zen Motor Company. Currently now we are the world's leading electric car company. I've worked alongside my uncle since 2001 when he found the company and really built this company to make a difference. It wasn't because he foresaw green being the new gold. It was because he was sitting in his car idling and realized that there was a fundamental problem and something needed to change. As Moses said, he's not able to be here with us, but he sends his apologies. All right, there we go. He's not able to be with us. What that means really is, the way I look at it, is I get to be sort of the good news guy. I say good news because it's sort of about time we had some. I was watching a program the other day, and a panel of experts all agreed that we had entered into the sixth great extinction, and the only one of the great extinctions to be caused by a single species. Guess who? Right? We've heard a lot about this, but that gave me hope, because if we are the cause of that, does that not also mean that we could be the solution to help prevent that from happening? And to fix something we've destroyed takes a tool, and the best tool that we have is our ability to use technology as an enabler. And we see this being done every day. We see technology being used to harness the energy from renewable sources, from the wind, from the sun, the water through tidal, and channel that energy into the world that really depends on it for survival. But what we haven't seen yet is a technology that's able to store energy so that we, we can use it when we need to use it. Maybe it's low on batteries, so I'm going to talk about advanced batteries. <laughs> and we can use it for this. It's all about energy storage. Imagine a car um, that could travel hundreds of miles on a single five-minute charge, a single five-minute recharge, or being able to completely load level the electrical grids of the world. We heard Bobby Kennedy speak about that. Because a few days before they predict the grid will spike, we crank up those coal plants and we pump out that energy. The reason is because we can't store it to be able to use it when we need it. There we go. What I'm talking about is a better battery. And I'll introduce you to one right now. I have a minute and 36 left, so it's going to be fast. eStore is our technology partner. They're a private company based in Austin, Texas, who are literally on 
the verge of commercializing a game-changing, disruptive energy storage device, or an ESU, that not only would render chemical batteries obsolete, okay, but eliminate the need for fossil fuels. We're talking about a battery that's a fraction of the weight and size of lithium-ion, and far less expensive. A battery that would make this work every time I push the button performs well under extreme temperatures. Which is a huge problem for existing chemical batteries. Rapid recharge capability without damage to the battery itself, and extended operating lifespan over a million cycles with no degradation. When I bought my BlackBerry, it lasted a week, and now I'm lucky if it lasts me the day. And this is supposedly the most advanced battery that we have. We haven't gone very far from lead acid. Simplified battery management, and this is a huge liability with with conventional batteries, and fully scalable. Watts to megawatts could have a battery, an ESU, a solid-state energy storage unit that's the size of a football field. We talk about the fresh water issues, and I read another article about these giant desalinization plants and reverse osmosis, and they require so much energy. So the damage to the environment from creating that energy and producing it could be catastrophic. But we need fresh water, so here's a solution. And safe, non-toxic, and every every component of this is completely recyclable. And there's abundance of raw material. The raw material is barium, originally used for tube televisions. We don't use those much anymore. We have a very unique relationship with this technology, and I'm going to quickly run through this.、It、falls into two categories. One is our equity in the company. We were the first investors in this when. The people at eStore had an idea, so we currently own 3.8 percent equity of eStore. In the next few weeks, which is very exciting, we're going to see that increase to between 6.2 percent and 10.5 percent total equity of eStore. It's a small Canadian company, a Canadian entrepreneur. We also, secondly, have our license agreement. We have the global exclusivity to use this technology in any new vehicle. 1,400 kilo curb weight or smaller. So to put that in perspective, that represents about a four-door sedan. That's 1,400 kilos without the internal combustion engine, without the gas tank, without the exhaust system. Represents about 50 million new car sales every year. More exciting, I would say, is our exclusivity to use this technology in any used passenger vehicle to convert them to electric. So we could produce an electric car. But we can't expect everybody to just ditch their current ICE vehicle, internal combustion engine vehicle. What would we do with that? So we're excited. We'd be able to convert them. 900 million cars in the world today. We also have the exclusivity to use this technology in golf carts and recreational vehicles. Picture the Intel of the automotive industry. Okay. Currently, we're developing the Zenergy drivetrain. It's a 100% electric drivetrain that can be scaled to fit in any OEM platform. Right? We're also developing the Zenergy drivetrain that can be used in conversion kits. Again, fully scalable. I'm going to wrap up because my, I'm, I'm so in the red. I'm in so much trouble. It's time for change. We've heard this a lot, and, and I'm here to say it again. And it's so exciting, though, to know that we're so close. To something, to witnessing such a transformative technological innovation that could not only ensure our survival in this sixth great extinction we've entered, and the survival of countless species that we've endangered, but will also allow us to tell future generations that yes, you know what, we were able to change. It might have been at the last moment, but we were able to change and pass on to them tools like this to. Rebuild the healthy planet that I think we were all given the responsibility to protect. Thank you. Evan, the company is going to build the cars here in Canada, right? Yes. Well, we're we're developing the drivetrain here in Canada. You're hesitating、Definitely. about that. I was going to ask you, what do you think the price point for the car will be? I can't get into that. We're a public company. So I can't say much, but what I can say 
is currently we have a low-speed vehicle. We have a car that's manufactured in Europe by a company called Microcar, and we build out the electric drivetrain here, and we ship it to the US. We can't sell this little electric car in Canada. I wish we could. We had one in 2007. That was my next question, yes. which is when your uncle was here, yeah. I wanted him to bring a couple of cars up that. to the door, and we would all tool around yeah. it and get a feel, right? Yeah. It turns out it couldn't be licensed. It wasn't yeah. allowed out in traffic. Yeah. And, and Dean Kamen has had exactly the same problem with the Segway. Yeah. No one could figure out whether it's a sidewalk vehicle or a street vehicle that fell afoul of a lot of regulation, and yeah. the development has been restricted for that reason. You suffer from the same problem. Oh, very seriously, and I remember when you asked Ian to bring the vehicles, and he came to my office and said, all right, are you, really, are you willing to break the law so that we can get these vehicles to Moses and have outside Idea City? I said, of course I am. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I had lunch with you know, David Suzuki, and David Suzuki said, you know what, I want to buy one right now and drive it and get arrested for driving a neighborhood electric vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. But what we did is, uh, and we had, we, I remember, we had the Zen out there, and as Ian was in here, I was out there with crowds of people. Mm. So to answer your question, currently, we still cannot uh, sell the car here. But so we it's do a year build later, it no a year development later, on the political front. Nothing. And we're a small company. We can't you know, spend our resources here in Canada trying to fight the government. And they all tell us, oh, we're going to allow it. But the wonderful thing about our move with Zenergy drivetrain mm. is that they can't stop us. Because it's a drivetrain that goes in existing cars right. that are allowed to drive on the roads. All right. So, Why? Well, it's these jurisdictional <laughs> issues that overlap, and they haven't come to well, they a said view yeah. on how to license it. It's like a golf cart. The, the, the attitude of the regulation is it's like a golf cart, and you can't drive a golf cart in North Street traffic. Right? They say it's a safety issue. Yeah. There has never been a death associated with this class of vehicle, ever. We have 40 dealerships in the US. We have hundreds of customers in the US. And the Canadian government says- This is for this street traffic or for oh, golf for, courses? No, for street traffic, right. for urban commuting. And they say, you know what? You can't, we can't allow, well, you know what? Whatever the reasons are, they don't allow us to sell them here. And the oil sands are worth a lot of money and I'm not gonna get into that. But, <laughs> you know, but with the controversy is a nice thing to talk about here. It's a great forum for it. But, um, they tell us it's a safety issue. We don't know how to certify it. Well, the U.S. does, Europe does, almost every other country, and Canada just won't allow us. I can tell you, Quebec has introduced a pilot project, a three-year pilot project to allow our cars, uh, these low-speed vehicles, to be driven on the roads in Quebec. So we said, well, that's wonderful, three years. Okay, that's great. You know, as a, as a car company, we need, uh, no, we need a year to prep for this. So what that meant is that we could introduce a car at that point, price point, $20,000 Canadian, say here, buy a car for $20,000, but you might only be able to drive it for 24 months. Who's going to buy it? But the government said, oh, we, we allowed them. We allowed them to sell it. We allowed it on our roads. So, you know. I we, understand. Uh, yeah. So we'll keep a watching brief on this, right. and maybe you'll come back a year from now and tell I'd us be happy whether to. you've made any progress at all. Thank you. Yeah. Give my best to Ian. I will. All right. Thank you.